This is CBS 4 News at 5. Right now at 5, we are tracking the tropics, and it is a busy night as we track Tropical Storm Gonzalo making its way closer tonight to the southern Windward Islands. And we're also tracking Hannah as it moves closer to the Texas coastline. CBS 4 Chief Meteorologist Craig Setzer has the details tonight. Craig, what can you tell us? So there's some pretty big news with Gonzalo. Craig, thanks a lot. Now to the latest on the coronavirus pandemic. The state of Florida passing another sobering threshold today surpassing 400,000 cases. It took the state just nine days to go from 300,000 to where we are today. So here's today's breakdown. Florida added more than 12,000 new COVID-19 cases today, bringing the total to more than 402,000. 136 more deaths were reported today, bringing that total to 5,768. Miami-Dade County added more than 3,300 new cases, bringing the total to more than 98,000. 1,370 people have died. Broward added more than 1,500 cases. There are more than 46,500 cases and 546 deaths. And Monroe County surpassed 1,000 cases today with 84 cases added to its total. No new deaths were reported there. Miami-Dade County Mayor Carlos Jimenez says more testing is coming to the county. And not only will there be more testing sites, there's also new plans for nighttime testing for those who work during the day. CBS 4's Peter Dinch is in Miami with those details. One of the new drive through test sites is right here at the Miami-Dade Auditorium on Flagler Street. CBS 4 News. And the University of Miami is taking part in clinical trials for a COVID-19 vaccine. Vice President Mike Pence is taking note and plans to visit the program next week to meet with researchers and university leadership. CBS 4's Jessica Vallejo has the latest on those trials. Vice President Mike Pence is set to visit Miami on Monday. Now at 5, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is in Washington, D.C. tonight, where he attended a signing of President Donald Trump's executive order aimed at lowering drug prices. He is also there to talk to White House staff about the state's battle against the virus. The visit comes one day after the president canceled his big convention speech in Jacksonville next month. CBS 4 Skylar Henry has more from the White House. This week, the U.S. surpassed 4 million coronavirus cases. CBS News, the White House. Republicans also say they want to include another round of direct payments to some Americans in the next coronavirus relief bill. And right now, new at five community efforts to feed South Florida continue amid this pandemic. Today, a farm share event at Notre Dame, the Haiti Catholic Church in Miami. Miami-Dade Commissioner Audrey Edmondson and State Representative Dottie Joseph working together on the event. They provided drive through food and supplies to people in need. People have gone back to work and have been laid off for the second time uh, from their uh, jobs. People are desperately in need of food to feed their families as well as themselves. Commissioner Edmondson pointed out that middle class families are starting to join the low income population showing up for the free meal. She says this concerns her because it means people have been spending their savings. In Miami's Little Havana neighborhood, restaurants have been especially hit hard by the pandemic. Now an idea could help pick up business. Calle Ocho, known for its vibrant tourism, has been noticeably silent. Local eateries are relying on pickup and delivery orders. They are allowed to use adjacent sidewalks for outdoor seating, but many say it's just not enough space. So some owners say they've lost a lot of business. Disasters. It has killed us. Okay, this business feed my family. You don't have that income. It's difficult like any other person. Multiple Little Havana business owners tell CBS4 they want Calle Ocho to close down, much like side streets in Coconut Grove are doing. The city of Miami hasn't responded to our request for a comment on this proposal yet. And so much more to come on CBS4 News at 5. Tonight, sniffing out the virus. It'll be a lot easier than sticking a cotton swab up your nose. Canines hot on the scent of COVID. And Next protecting your baby from COVID-19. The new measures for mothers to avoid infecting their newborns are next. You'll have to enjoy that beer and hot dog at home, but play ball it is. It's Marlins opening day. We've got a preview. The now. German army is working on a program to train dogs to sniff out COVID-19. The country's defense minister says the service dogs may be able to detect it through people's saliva. 
The canines can't specifically identify COVID-19, but they are able to sniff out biological changes in body fluids caused by the virus. The training works on a merit-based reward system. If the dogs identify saliva with a virus present, they get a treat. If they pick healthy saliva, they get nothing. The German military says the program is still in the beginning stages. It's going to take months before producing any meaningful data. Boy, he's really into his job, too. That very hurts, important right? job. Hey, hopefully it works. You know who's got a very important job right now, too? Craig Setzer. That is the truth. Is All the time. monitoring uh, two storms and a potential third one, right, Craig? Yeah, well, there's a lot going on out there, and uh, obviously somebody said go to the Atlantic Basin because... Some big news in the NHL. The league announcing the name of its newest team coming to Seattle. And when we heard the rallying cry of the fans and we heard the undeniable passion they had for this name, we knew it was the one. We are the Seattle Kraken. The franchise conducted a poll asking for team name, logo, and suggestions. And after receiving 100,000 entries, they settled on the Seattle Kraken. Just the name is ominous. The team also revealing its colors and jersey design, which it describes as deep sea blue, ice blue, and red alert. The Kraken are expected to start in the 2021 season. Another team revealing its new uniforms, the NFL team now known as the Washington football team sent out this design. The team's colors will remain burgundy and white, but the logo on the helmet will be replaced by a player's jersey number. The team name right now is only temporary while Washington decides on a permanent replacement. It's not clear if they'll change the colors in future seasons. And now it's time to play ball. So let's get cracking here. The Miami Marlins open the baseball season tonight against the Philadelphia Phillies. CBS 4's Steve Goldstein is on deck in the newsroom with a preview. Steve. It's been a long way, Carly Elliott. Time to play ball as baseball is finally back. Okay, still ahead on CBS 4 News at 5. Are you making masks at home? We'll tell you what you must do to make sure they are safe and effective. Plus this. A rally against mandatory face masks in Broward County, a group calling it unconstitutional. I'm Brooke Schaefer in Fort Lauderdale. That story coming up on CBS 4 News. Plus, the RNC canceled in Jacksonville accusations of sexism in Congress. Lots to talk about with the host of CBS's Face the Nation, Margaret Brennan, up next. With mask mandates in South Florida, this next story is especially important. That's because many are making homemade masks, and some new research suggests that for them to be effective, the layers of covering is key. So here's CBS4's Naomi Ruckham. Kate Barton never leaves home without her cloth face mask. From CBS News, New York. Well, Dr. Prather says it's easy to tell if your face mask fits right. You should be able to feel it sucking back against your nose when you breathe in. And then when you blow out, it goes back out. That means the air is passing through the mask, which is essential. Time to check out what's trending now. It's an age old question. Why did the chicken cross the road? Well, we still don't know why, but we do know <laughs> where, Elliot. So okay. researchers say the first chicken to cross the road likely did that in Southeast Asia. Really? That makes sense, yeah, since a new study says the modern-day chicken, the modern-day chicken, descended from an ancient fowl somewhere in Southeast Asia. So which came first, though, the chicken or the egg? Let's save that one for another day, huh? Yeah, we'll follow that one up. Mm -hmm. One tequila, two tequila, three tequila, floor. Today <laughs> is National Tequila Day. Who knew? I thought that was Cinco de Mayo, right? Oh, yeah. Anyway, people can celebrate with a sip of their favorite tequila, whether it's Blanco or Agave. The most important thing is a straight shooter would say, drink responsibly. You a big but tequila course, drinker? I like margaritas. There, maybe so. tequila? <laughs> There you go. Drink That's an after work thing. That's right. You can do it on Saturday. Oh. There are always great videos and stories to see online. Check out more of what's trending on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and CBSMiami.com slash web extra. Well, despite skyrocketing COVID cases in the country, Costa Rica says tourists are welcome, but not from the U.S. Details next. Not a campaign 2020. Many Americans are expected to vote by mail for the first time this November because of the pandemic. Across the country, rules vary for when you can get your ballot and when you should return it. But there is one thing clear. You need to give it some more time than your state might recommend to get your ballot through the mail system. CBS This Morning's Tony DeCopel has more on an experiment CBS News set up to see how long you should give yourself to make sure your vote counts. If you know how to mail a letter, you already know how to mail in your vote. New York. 
In 2016, out of 33 million mail-in ballots, more than 73,000 arrived too late to be counted. Now on the road to reopening, Costa Rica is opening its borders to some international travelers, but not those from the United States. The country will allow visitors from the European Union, Canada, and the UK starting August 1st. The U.S. is not on the list due to the surge of cases in our country. The decision is part of the gradual reopening measures Costa Rica is taking despite a sharp uptick in coronavirus cases in recent days. And COVID-19 safety concerns are scaring the organizers of Halloween Horror Nights. Universal Studios announcing that its parks in Florida and California will not hold the popular annual event this year. Halloween Horror Nights have become a staple for park visitors, but the frightening fun will have to wait until 20. 21. Hard to believe we're already thinking about fall and the events going on there. Something else hard to believe we're thinking about hurricane season. That's right. Of uh, Craig was saying that uh, July is acting like September, right, Craig? <laughs> Yeah, and that's what happens in a, in a hyperactive year, which uh, this is turning out to be, is that the calendar is just kind of opened you up. You can't keep us down, and you cannot keep a camera out of our hands. <laughs> <laughs> Celebrate the human spirit with me, the greatest at-home videos, tonight, 8, 7 central on CBS. The coronavirus pandemic has caused financial problems for individuals and businesses alike. Yeah, and this is very sad to report because it's such a special restaurant. One South Florida chef has closed the doors of her popular Coral Gables restaurant after 21 years in business. CBS Force Lisa Petrillo has the end of an era at Ortonique on the Mile. Chef Cindy Hudson is a familiar name to many in South Florida. CBS yes. 4 News. I'm so sad. One of my favorite places. And I never had the pleasure of frequenting uh, there, but just so sad to see yeah. what's happening to all these restaurants. You know what, but I'm going to be an optimist and say this will be over. Yes. And Cindy and Delius and Ashley will reopen somewhere and we'll, all the fans will be there and we'll take you there too. Now I can try. We'll <laughs> there see. There you go. I like your positive there attitude. You go. That's CBS 4 News at 530. And here's what's next on CBS 4 News at 6. The University of Miami is one of several institutions from around the country getting ready to begin phase three trials for a coronavirus vaccine. Now their work is getting the attention of the vice president. As COVID-19 numbers continue to rise, the federal government opens five new testing sites in South Florida. We hear from Miami Dade Mayor Carlos Jimenez, who says even more testing could be coming. And property taxes will be mailed out soon. The impact the pandemic is having on those who have to pay. CBS 4 News at 6 starts right now. This is CBS 4 News at 6. Now at 6, the tropics remain very active with two tropical storms. Gonzalo continues to make its way towards the Windward Islands. And Hannah, which is right off the coast of Texas, is also out there. We are trekking the tropics. Good evening, everyone. I'm Elliot Rodriguez. And I'm Carly Barnett in for Lauren Pastrana tonight. But those are not the only storms, of course, to keep an eye on, as there's a strong tropical wave developing off the coast of Africa. Let's check in right now with CBS4 Chief Meteorologist Craig Setzer. Craig. Kind of a good news, bad news, and a yet, yet to see news situation. Yes, four news. I'm so sad. One of my favorite places. I never had the pleasure of frequenting uh, there, but just so sad to see yeah. what's happening to all these restaurants. You know what, but I'm going to be an optimist and say this will be over. Yes. And Cindy and Delius and Ashley will reopen somewhere, and we'll, all the fans will be there, and we'll take you there, too. Now I can try. We'll there see. There you go. I like your positive there attitude. You go. That's CBS 4 News at 530. And here's what's next on CBS 4 News at 6. The University of Miami is one of several institutions from around the country getting ready to begin phase three trials for a coronavirus vaccine. Now their work is getting the attention of the vice president. As COVID-19 numbers continue to rise, the federal government opens five new testing sites in South Florida. We hear from Miami-Dade Mayor Carlos Jimenez, who says, even more testing could be coming. And property taxes will be mailed out soon. The impact the pandemic is having on those who have to pay. CBS 4 News at 6 starts right now. This is CBS 4 News at 6. Now at 6, the tropics remain very active with two tropical storms. Gonzalo continues to make its way towards the Windward Islands. And Hannah, which is right off the coast of Texas, is also out there. We are trekking the tropics. 
Good evening, everyone. I'm Elliot Rodriguez. And I'm Carly Barnett in for Lauren Pastrana tonight. But those are not the only storms, of course, to keep an eye on as there's a strong tropical wave developing off the coast of Africa. Let's check in right now with CBS 4 Chief Meteorologist Craig Setzer. Craig. Kind of a good news, bad news, and yet, yet to see news situation here. It's not looking too bad out there this evening. I'll have more on that forecast coming up. Craig, thanks a lot. Now to the coronavirus pandemic. The state of Florida passing another threshold today, surpassing 400,000 cases. It took the state just nine days to go from 300,000 to where we are today. Here's today's breakdown. Florida added more than 12,000 new COVID-19 cases today, bringing the total to more than 402,000. 136 more deaths were reported today, bringing that total to 5,768. Miami-Dade County added more than 3,300 new cases, bringing the total to more than 98,000. 1,370 people have died. Broward added more than 1,500 cases. There are more than 46,500 cases there and 546 deaths. Monroe County surpassed 1,000 cases today, with 84 COVID-19 cases added to its total no new deaths reported there and here's a look at South Florida's positivity rate according to the State Department of Health in Miami-Dade County the number of those who tested positive is up from yesterday at 19.7 percent but the 14-day average remains at 19.5 percent in Broward the numbers went up as well to 15.7 percent while their 14 day average remains at 14.7%. And in Monroe, it's jumped to 16.8% with a 14 day average of 14.4%. 10% is the threshold that's considered safe for real numbers continue to climb in South Florida. Federal, state, and local officials are doing what they can to make sure testing is available to anyone who needs it. CBS 4's Peter Dench spoke with Miami Dade Mayor Carlos Jimenez about the new federal testing sites in both Miami Dade and Broward counties and his plans to expand testing hours. One of the new drive through test sites is right here at the Miami Dade Auditorium. President Trump has taken executive action to slash the cost of insulin and EpiPens. The president says he'll allow imports of lower priced pharmaceuticals from Canada and other nations. He was joined at today's event at the White House by Governor Ron DeSantis, who also talked about Florida's response to the pandemic with the president's chief of staff. The U.S. surpassed 4 million coronavirus cases this week, but the administration is still pushing for schools to reopen in the fall, even though the president recently said some hard hit areas may have to delay for a few weeks. It is our firm belief that the that our schools are essential places of business, if you will, that our teachers are essential personnel. White House negotiators and congressional Republicans say they want to include more than $100 billion in funding to get kids back to the classroom in a phase four relief bill. Democrats are pushing for an extension to the $600 enhanced unemployment benefits that are set to expire for millions of Americans over these next few days. There's much to more to come on CBS 4 News at 6. One local summer camp is celebrating not one, but two special anniversaries. We've got the details after the break. And the pandemic has impacted many, but it's also brought out the best in our community. We ride along for some special deliveries to those in need. McDougal Technical Institute Preparatory held a drive through ring ceremony to celebrate its national championship team presenting the rings to 30 football players. Retired NFL player Stocker McDougal and his wife Octavia launched the school last year. And those are some big rings. A lot that's of bling. That's right. There. Big win, big rings. <laughs> Congratulations to them. Glad they could have their moment. Yeah, that's our news for now. The CBS Evening News with Nora O'Donnell is next. And we're back in half an hour.